Okay, uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Gidiomi and Morris. Just confirm if you can hear me well. Good evening. Thank you, Chairman. I can hear you. Yes, good evening, Banakeri. Uh, Santi Sana, Chairman. Morris, you can also hear me well. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well, uh, Maurice. Good. So I think we just kick on. Uh, thank you. We'll just kick on because for the interest of time, uh, as usual, those who will join later on, they can follow the, the recording. Otherwise, I trust you have been well. I know this has been a, a very challenging week. Uh, to DC, Umoja, and Deliverance Church as a whole, uh, having mm. uh, in regards to the to to the death of uh, Rev Becky, I'm sure it has been a period of reflection as we celebrate her life and also adjust and accept that these are. Uh, these are hard, difficult times, but we also be able to look at the positive part of it. As uh, Bishop said during uh, Rev. Matthew Barrio, these are times you have to think on your feet. You have to adjust on your feet because sometimes you are trying to adjust, but things have already happened. You have to move on. You have to uh, plan the way forward. And uh, it is not easy, but by the grace of God, I'm sure we are able to. So I thought maybe we can spend just some few minutes just to just to reflect on the life of uh, Rev Becky. Uh, probably there's something we can share among us ourselves, uh, both in terms of leadership and also in terms of service. Uh, what are some of the lessons that we probably we can share among us ourselves? Uh, just to encourage us and also to refocus us and to help us benefit uh, from her life's experience. So I'll just request our brother Morris to open with a word of prayer, and then we can discuss uh, briefly about uh, that topic. Brother Morris, uh, you can open with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Yes, let us pray. Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we present ourselves before you as a class of worship. And Lord, as we begin, we welcome you and invite you. All we are praying that you give us wisdom. You be with us throughout this discussion. We have been together both at the lockdown. Now the lockdown is out, but you're still in our class with the new lesson that is for us. And as we want to do it, Lord, we want to invite you and let your spirit come and take control and let help us that all that you have touched in this and learned in this, these uh, lessons that you have gone through shall be put into practice in our lives and all the lives of others. And let the leadership skills be awoken and to be active in everything that you do. For it is Jesus, Jesus in our prayer and believe Amen. 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 So probably, Chairman, you can uh, you can uh, share your experience and maybe a few lessons as we move on. Karibu, okay. Chairman. Thank you, Bwana Kiari. Thank you. Unani pata? Yes, uh, tunakupata vizuri. Yes. Okay. Uh, what I can say on the life of Reverend Becky, uh, one is when you look at uh, her background, uh, as it you know, as she was eulogized, you will see a very, very, very humble girl coming to the city. Uh, and I think all she would do with was, I think, some, some, some as a teacher, primary teacher, 
but uh, school and coming to church, she was able to 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 to, to display or to really bring out that she, she was you know when she gave her life to Christ that uh, she would want to in Sunday school, and that actually now ignited her gift of, of teaching, and it was quickly picked, and uh, you know she was given a place in Sunday school. And then somebody picked it again uh, that uh, this is a potential You're breaking now. of the one. <laughs> Sorry? Okay, from my Hello. side. Hello. From my side, I can hear you. Okay. Morris, you can hear me. No. How did you know that I'm mine? <laughs> it, it, it's going and breaking, breaking. Yeah, I can he can hear you, but can you run Yeah, I can hear you well now. Okay. Oh, uh, you'll tell me, but I'm not audible. So what I was saying. Through all that, you will see that uh, leadership is, or rather, this life is about us discovering uh, our niche, what we call the value proposition, what you have, uh, that gift God has given you, and then uh, you bring it out, it will simply find some fertile ground, and you will live life in full. That's one thing that, uh, because after that she went to Bible school and she was able to do best what she was uh, wired to do, being an evangelist. She did it. She did it with all her energy. You can actually see, it's not that, I would say, it's not that she was, she, she, she did a lot. I mean, what could I say? Uh, she had those special gifts, but what she did, she did it so passionately. Uh, that evangelism mango. She did it all, and that actually now uh, opened a lot of platforms for her, both in this country and outside. Again, the emphasis is it's not how much you are even educated, because most of even maybe her education, she did it after she joined the research. So it is your gift that is make will make a way for you. Uh, the other one is uh, it's not the number of years between the birth and the death. It is what you contribute. It is it is how much you have given in life. In the years you live, it is how much you contribute. Because you may live for many years, but you'll never have much impact. But when you you use, it's like you spend your life uh, for the good of the society, uh, transforming them. You will never be forgotten and you will make a mark. So, like how you can see, she didn't leave what would say she, she was in her 50s, but you can actually see the impact even by the number of people who are there in the barrio. Uh, you could actually see even the caliber of people who are there. That tells you the how, how she was able to touch the heart. Maybe the last one. Uh, yeah, the last one is maybe back to the same point. It's self-discovering yourself, know what your strength is, and be the best. After you self-discover what you are good at, do it with all the action, and the world, the world will recognize you. Don't try to imitate other people. She was very unique. Well, whatever she was gifted in, in passionately, and actually that was very clear. That was very clear as her... Uh, uh, the way we saw her in her memorial service. So it's not the number of years, it is your contribution to the humanity. Thank you. Zumeni Pata. Tumekupata vizuri, Chairman. Yeah, okay. thank, you, thank you so much for that uh, contribution. I think those are quite heavy stuff that you have shared there. We'll, refer, we'll reflect on that. Uh, Maurice, uh, please uh, also take it up and share your experience also. Uh, 
Uh, Maurice, are you, let me know if you can get me clear. I'm a mute. Uh, you can un unmute, Maurice. please, Maurice. You're muted, Maurice. Please unmute. Sorry, uh, my, I think my network was, was was fluctuating. That's why I was not getting the chairman. Okay, now we can hear you. Man. Can you get me? Uh, yes, Maurice. Mm. Uh, the life of uh, Reverend Becky Barak, I knew how already in the podium. I think some, maybe the chairman knew her when she was still uh, at the primary school level. But uh, uh, my lesson from what she, how good used her is that uh, we should, what normally say that God uses those people who, I mean, equal, uh, there's a word that Bishop normally uses. Yeah? Those he calls, yeah. or there are those who, It's a word that Bishop normally uses, uh, that your presence to service to God is the most important thing, not necessarily the qualifications that you've had in life or the background. That was such a wonderful, uh, uh, humble background, which rose to effect the more Christian uh, levels and locally, Despite the fact that she was not even married, yes, she kept on desiring because to me I was I was very close. Actually, she's she was not married, but she was calling, was canceling my marriage, and she's the one who even officiated our wedding. So uh, very closely and very strict and close and committed to the word of God in most things that she's doing. And in fact, uh, Reverend Beck knew nothing but preaching the gospel to be able to win souls. Any moment she meets anybody that is not born again, I, I, I greet you. After the greeting, then this is how she will bring in the word of God and in a soft will start ministering to you, to you until you just find yourself through the words that she had, she had gotten through reading, studying, and practicing the word of God. Uh, her quest for new souls was very automatic. And I think from the time I've been into Deliverance Church, there is none that I've seen that I've ever called an altar call and people came for, uh, for, to be saved as though you could think that they were called to be to, 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 uh, salvation. And it was very wonderful. Actually, as preaching that you're saying, what happens when the foundations are shaken? Jesus is still on the throne and we must focus for me, were very influential, as in, she had a very strong voice in the podium, the, which was required to be able to showcase that Satan is not a friend to anybody. Now, Vilalikwa Nasema that, yeah, Anna Dini is Satani. Therefore, she walked with her, with her neck up, uh, and every, every moment she will always uh, let anybody around her know that she's born again. And for that reason, I think that was a very good, perfect way of giving us an example that we need to serve God all that we have at any given time we have because we don't know about tomorrow. And as Bishop was yesterday, it's a journey. And if it happened, what happened, because everybody has a place at the opening time. When God, God tells you that I've opened your door, you're now existing to that door. And maybe... It, we could be here and he's doing the final touches today, our room and the other place that we are supposed to be passing on. Uh, do you be able to do? So lessons learned is that we should be able to, uh, to pour out ourselves and serve God without thinking that there's another time that we can, we can do it better, which has been a big thing that sometimes we think, ah, let me, let me relax this tomorrow. I think for now, what I've learned from Reverend Becky, there's no tomorrow. What you find, do it. The word, how you can do it. Back to you, Isa. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Maurice. 
Yeah, I think uh, this, this, there's so much we can discuss about uh, Reverend Becky. And as uh, all of you have noted from the background, the, I think the simplicity of, of uh, ministry, she didn't complicate the work of God. I think she maintained her focus on the message and the mission of Jesus. Uh, we, we know we are living in times where there are quite a lot of uh, a lot of uh, additional modification, and the, the message is being taken in different way. I think for her, she was very specific, very particular, and uh, her message and mission was very, very clear, and uh, that's very encouraging. Uh, I think also in terms of uh, how she operated, uh, she operated at her optimum. She was at, always at the peak. And I think that's a very important message uh, to all of us yeah, that uh, uh, once we have gone through the self-discovery, then you, we just need to optimize. We don't need to operate at the average, at the lowest level, but we need to operate uh, at the peak, at the peak, that should be, that's something that could come out very clear from her life, uh, based on the passion, based on her dedication. And uh, I think it's, she was presented a platform which she really maximized. And I know Deliverance Church has given us a platform also in different ways. So it's how now we're able to optimize that and serve God and serve the people and also utilize uh, what we have. And uh, I think as I was reflecting about this, the recent events, one of the things that I appreciated is about the sovereignty of God. There are times you may want to ask questions, but we all belong to him. He's the, he's the author, he's the, he's the overall. And therefore as a farmer, uh, he has the choice of what to harvest, and uh, that 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 remains uh, undebatable. As much as we may want to debate, I remember when we lost our in-law uh, bishop, we were really asking ourselves so many questions. And my parents, who are still alive, uh, over eighty years on, old, they were asking a lot of questions. Uh, this was a man that was strong. He was not, they were saying he was not even like us who are struggling with a lot of uh, challenges in terms of the health wise, but he was a strong man, but he has gone. And I think the reflection was God is sovereign. Uh, we all belongs to him and uh, he has the final word. Uh, he can harvest at any time and that remains, he remains to be God. And I think it also helps us to just focus on him and purely depend on him. And I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot we can pick from this period as much as some of them are difficult, but I think as leaders, we'll be focusing on what, what is the message that is coming out of all these, uh, all these happenings. Uh, what are we learning from the experiences that are going on around us? And just as we have reflected today, We'll move on doing that, looking at the positive side of the situation uh, so that we can be able to uh, move people forward and also be able to move forward uh, without losing focus. So thank you for your, th thank you for that, th that sharing. I've picked a few points. I think uh, those who will join this uh, session, I'll, uh, those who will be watching later on, they'll be able to benefit from this and we can also move or continue sharing uh, as a team. Otherwise, uh, I just want to move on to the session uh, so that we optimize what we have now. So we are looking at the last session, which is communication. Uh, and this is a very important topic. From the very beginning, we have been talking about communication in different uh, different lessons have touched on this area of communication. So we felt it's also good to address it as a topic uh, because it's a key role of a leader as I will be, uh, I'll, 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 uh, we'll see from the content that we're having today. So as 
Some of the content are in the manual and uh, there's a little bit of additionals. So if you miss something from your manual, uh, we'll be sharing this uh, PowerPoints uh, now that we are getting to the tail end of the session. So I had prepared a nice break, but I thought, let's just discuss the life of Reverend Becky. And I think we have done that well. So uh, effective communication, it said, uh, this is by Jim Rohn. Effective communication is 20% what you know and 80% how you feel about what you know or how you express what you know. Uh, and, and you see now, I, I think communication becomes very critical uh, because uh, there is what you know that contributes to 20%, but now how do I communicate? Uh, think of a professor, a learned professor, uh, who is able to communicate effectively what he has learned. And also think about another professor who has learned so much, but probably when it comes to uh, area of communication, it becomes a challenge. Then th that, that, that knowledge, that, uh, that wisdom, if we can't communicate it well, uh, then we, 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 we are able to, we minimize probably on the impact that we can, we can have. And therefore this, this is a topic that can uh, unlock or help us to be able to unlock more on what we have uh, and maybe even amplify what we have uh, and be able to share out there. Uh, and also be able to offer a better leadership. Actually, we, a question was asked to some leaders, what percentage do, do leaders spend on communication? If you look at your time as a chairman, as a organizing secretary, and uh, all of us, we are leading in different areas. But if you look at our life as leaders, what percentage of our time do we spend communicating. And when this question was posed to these leaders, uh, the question was, look at it from different aspects of communication, either verbal or face-to-face -face interaction, uh, emails, conference, and all the other channels of communication. And about seven, uh, uh, most of the leaders indicated they spent 80% of their time communicating. 80% of their time communicating. And that tells us that really, this is a very, very core part of a, a, a role of a leader. Uh, and I think we need to be very deliver, deliberate in this area. Uh, we need to reflect more on our own styles of communication and make it a very, uh, a core area of uh, focus in terms of how do I improve on the area of, or, or do I improve on my communication? Because it's a key role. Uh, if you're talking about 80% of a role of a leader in terms of the different roles a leader has and 80% is spent on communication, then it tells us that this is important. This is critical uh, because you can capture a very good vision, but now how do we communicate that? Now that distinguishes a successful leader and that leader that may not really be able to uh, achieve their vision or achieve their uh, objectives because probably I was, they, they were not equipped in terms of how to communicate. Uh, remember the, we looked at this, the core, the, the, we looked at the four core skills, the core uh, leadership skills that a leader requires. And uh, as you can see, uh, this was earlier lessons that we looked at. We were talking about self-awareness. Uh, communication was coming as the second one. And then a leader also need to develop skills uh, on how to influence and also learning agility. But I, I just flashed this out to continue emphasizing uh, the critical role of communication or effective communication uh, when it comes to leadership. Again, uh, there's another survey that we looked at and uh, a question was posed to some leaders. What are the leadership needs in your organization? Again, from this survey uh, conducted by NBO Group Limited, which is an Asia's trusted leadership 
communication and in, interpersonal skills training and development provider. Uh, it, they indicated that uh, ap apart from uh, leaders who inspire trust, second, Sorry, my network went off, uh, but I'm back. Yeah, sorry. Sorry for that. Uh, you can see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Let me know. Just yes, we can see it. Good. So as I was saying, this was uh, another survey, and it indicated uh, second the second uh, need that these leaders identified was leaders who communicate effectively. And uh, I just felt that we, we just need to appreciate, uh, appreciate the critical role and also appreciate that is, uh, this is something that has been confirmed even from other surveys and other leaders that indeed we require uh, effective communication skills as leaders and we need to be deliberate uh, as we undergo or as we focus on this area uh, to help us better our leadership uh, role and our leadership uh, skills. So there are five tips for effect, uh, effective communication now as we get to the core of communication. And this is based on Center for Creative Leadership. So they identified uh, five uh, tips or five areas that we need to focus on. One is communicate relentlessly. This is very, very important. And this has been one of the successful, the, the success factor for Global Leadership Network. I think we have always been very persistent on this. Uh, as much as we sometimes share online forms for people to register, you might realize maybe people may not take that uh, initiative to register based on different factors, but maybe if you follow them through a call, uh, you realize they were in, they, they, were, they, they were positive, but they didn't communicate the positive message in terms of registration or even in terms of offering a feedback. Uh, so relentlessly communicating has been one of the key uh, success factor for us. And it's a success factor for any leader uh, out there. And then simplify and be direct. Uh, simplicity in communication, like nowadays, this has become very critical. Uh, you Even in, on social media, uh, the simpler we communicate, uh, the easier people are able to uh, get the message and uh, probably uh, read through, get the whole message uh, from that simple uh, way of communication. So simplify and be direct. Uh, listen and encourage input and then illustrate through stories. I'll share about that. Uh, stories are the connecting, uh, they are co connecting points in any communication and then affirm with action uh, where, uh, where necessary. Affirm with action where necessary. And again, just to, to emphasize this, especially when it comes to issues of farming, issues of input. Uh, Steve Covey, the author of uh, The Seven Habits of a Highly Effective People, he, uh, he talked about uh, the habit number five, seek first to understand and then to be understood. Seek first to understand and then to be understood. And even in the Bible, the Bible talks about this, uh, the Bible talk, talks about this. I'll try and trace that. Be quick to, be quick to, to listen. Uh, and I think that that that's uh, I'll flash that out as we continue because it's very important when it comes to this area of communication. But uh, Steve Covey point is very important. That seek first to understand, then to be understood, or seek first to appreciate the message to get the complete message, uh, then you can be able to uh, bring your point out or even bring your perspective out. Uh, I, I noticed this 
when I was out there in Korea and I was in a committee of uh, uh, different uh, leaders from different countries. So our backgrounds were different. Our cultures, we had come all, all of us had come from different cultures. Uh, our even styles and reasoning were all different. And at, in the initial stage, the meetings were not smooth because all of us were very firm on our understanding, uh, our interpretation of uh, ideas. And uh, later on, I realized, I think what we needed was to listen more. Uh, we needed to listen more uh, because even the way we communicate, some words may not mean the same to someone else who has grown up in a different culture. And uh, I think we, we had to slow down and spend more time in listening, more time in trying to understand what is this person saying. Okay. At the end, we started appreciating some of us, even our perspectives uh, were, were wrong, but we were still very firm that we were right because we interpreted what we were saying and we didn't really pay much attention to what other people were trying to bring on board. Uh, and that was due to the diversity and the gap that uh, existed. You know, if we are sitting together as uh, people from Kenya, it's much even easier to understand each other. Our background, in most cases, even our styles of communication, uh, if we use shortcuts in communication, we still get it clear. But uh, in a different environment, you can't use a shortcut. You have to give the complete sentence and give the other person time to appreciate and digest what you are saying. So that, that, that uh, was important in terms of seeking to understand seeking to and spending more time to understand uh, than spending more time to prepare your response. Uh, so more time is spent in, how, am I really understanding this person? Uh, or even sometimes you pose question to just to be able to uh, grasp what the person is saying. So I think this is important. So in the manual, this quote is in the manual. Yeah, this, this is in the manual. Uh, so developing excellent communication skill is very important, very essential, and the leader must be able to share knowledge. As I said, I gave an example of a professor and ideas to transmit a sense of urgency, enthusiasm to others. If a leader cannot get a message across clearly and motivate others to act on it, then having a message does not even matter. Just think about this in terms of a vision. A leader who has a big vision, uh, a leader who has uh, a, a vision can, that can transform life. But now then it boils down to how do I communicate this vision? Because leaders, as leaders, we require people. We, we, we require people. We are dreaming of big things. We are have, we having big picture, big, uh, are we having visions that uh, we can't be able to move them alone. And at the end of the day, it's all about how do we create a team? How do we bring people on board to help us achieve uh, this big vision that uh, we, we can see ahead of us? So uh, then that ability to be able to relentlessly communicate, that ability to be able to uh, be persuasive in our communication, uh, to be understood, uh, then it becomes very critical. So, and again, John Maxwell, he says, I'm convinced more than ever that good communication and leadership are all about connecting. If you can connect with others at every level, one-on-one -on -one, in groups or with an audience, your relationships will be stronger. Uh, your sense of community improves, your ability to create teamwork increases, your influence increases, and your productivity will skyrocket. So the key word here is connecting. The key word is connecting. Am I able to connect? Uh, am I able to uh, pass the message and connect with the people? Uh, am I able to get a response that tells me, indeed, my me the message was delivered, it was interpreted, and the interpretation was right? So uh, there are those who communicate, but there are those who are able to connect. Uh, with the people. There are components of communication, and uh, I'll just flash this through, but there are communication components. Uh, 
if you look at the iceberg, the communication iceberg, it tells us about the tip, seven to 10%. Uh, this is from uh, online resource. So they're saying seven to 10%, it's about communication uh, skill level. And then 90 to 93% uh, is the attitude, the motivational level, probably the, the passion, the enthusiasm, that embodying the, the message, that uh, showing that this is something that is, is inscribed in you. It's part and parcel of what you are communicating. And just look back at the reflection that we were having about the life of um, Reverend Becky Baraka. I, I think you could see this message was part and parcel of her. She was in the right track, she was, uh, she was at her best. She knew exactly what she was conveying. She was very courageous uh, I, and, and she was in sync with what she was saying and, what, and who she was. So th that, that having the skill is important, but we are saying this is just 10, uh, up to 10%. But now the attitude, remember the first quote that we started with, that uh, communication is about 20% of what you know and then 80% of how you feel, how you express, and the attitude that you're able to convey when we are communicating uh, the, the, the information that we want to pass across. So uh, again, from just looking at the components of communication, we are saying language is 7%. Uh, Paralanguage, these are the volume, the pitch, uh, the voice quality, it's 38%. But now the body language, and this is now where the embodying the message comes in. Uh, this is where the uh, probably the, the 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 attitude and other critical components uh, fall. This contributes to eight uh, fifty five percent of our communication. This is also repeated again from this source where we are saying words words form eight percent tone and inflection. 37%, just a difference of 1% uh, from the previous uh, survey. And then body and facial, 55%. Yeah, so uh, I think this is important to help us just balance in, uh, when it comes to our communication styles. How do we balance all this? And where do we have the more weight uh, so that we are able to balance in our uh, our communication. So I think that's important just to appreciate the components of communication, just to wade through, to wade through. Uh, and I think this is important just to help us appreciate where is the weight? Where do we put uh, uh, the more weight in terms of how we prepare our message? Is it just in terms of the words that we're going to use, uh, the, which forms 8%, it's important. It's critical, but now in terms of the weight, it's 8% or 7% from the previous one. Then tone and inflation, and this is the paralanguage, uh, the volume, the pitch. These ones, they form uh, at 8% or at 7%. So good, uh, and we appreciate this. Uh, but again, we move on to the body language. And body language here, we are talking about the facial expression, uh, the attitude that we display from our, our, our message, this is the core, and that forms uh, 85%, uh, or 55% uh, for both surveys. So I think this, this helps us just to be able to proportionally uh, prepare ourselves in terms of how we deliver our communication. Now I'll move on to just uh, five leadership principles on effective communication. These are in the manual. And we are saying that leadership is equals communication. They are intertwined. A leader uh, is a communicator. And I think we appreciate this because we are saying uh, leadership involves issues of visioning, uh, issues of influencing, uh, and all this they can't be achieved if this component of communication is not uh, well uh, taken care of. So leadership is about communication. 
And communication is a real work of leadership, according to Newton uh, Noria. So good leadership starts with good communication, and your leadership will rise or fall based on your ability to communicate. So leadership equals communication. That is our first principle uh, on effective communication. Then number two, we are saying effective communicators understand one, the purpose, two, the method, that's the how, and three, the what, which is the outcome or expected results. So this is important in any communication. So I'll be asking myself, what is the purpose of this communication? Two, uh, after understanding the purpose, then what is the best method to convey this message? So how will I convey the message? And then number three, uh, the other question that I'll be asking myself, what is the outcome? What do, I, what do I expect at the end of it all? What is the expected results of my communication? Uh, in, and in, many, in most cases, in any forum where we have good communicators, they will really make sure that this comes out very well. And uh, that's why in many, most cases we want to be in sync, especially in terms of our expectation, both from the audience and also from us who are uh, communicating some particular message. So we want to be in sync and uh, sometimes even align. Once you listen to the audience, uh, you try to weigh, are we expecting the same results at the end of it all? Uh, or do I need to adjust uh, so that we can be able, they can be able to benefit from the communication? Because it's all about the audience. Number three, so uh, the bottom line question on effective communication, uh, this is still under number two. Ask yourself these questions, why? So the purpose, what is the purpose for the communication? So, and we are saying effective leadership communication strategy starts with knowing your purpose and expectation, and then now aligning to that. Are we communicating to inform, which can be one way? Are we communicating to instruct? which is also one way, or are we communicating to persuade, uh, which, which is uh, probably a two-way uh, communication. So uh, what is the overall purpose of this message? Uh, again, we are saying how, what is the best method, as I said. So we need to keep procedure brief or focus on quality, not just on the quantity. I know your audience, and this comes from the expectation. Uh, what do they expect at the end of it all? And then we realize that perspectives are not always the same. Uh, so we appreciate uh, the perspectives. And again, we, uh, uh, in a diplomatic way, be able probably to, con to convey our, our perspective or the goal of the communication. And then what, that is what we said is the message. Okay, so number three, the, the third principle we are saying capturing a vision idea is one thing, communicating the vision in an inspirational, influential manner is another major task. And only effective communicators are able to achieve this. So having a vision is one thing, but getting that message across and rallying people behind the idea is quite another task and a very, very critical task uh, for any successful leader. So leadership is having a vision as we noted this from the very beginning. Again, having a vision. Secondly, we are saying sharing that vision, inspiring others to support your vision while creating their own. So sharing, communicating. Having a vision is one, communicating is another major task. Uh, okay, so uh, thirdly, we are saying uh, fourth, the fourth principle, so hard skills versus soft skills. Uh, hard skills, these are more functional or technical skills, may not differentiate performance. Uh, it is the softer skills, that is the leadership, communication, collaboration, networking, that differentiate successful leaders. Uh, remember the iceberg model from the very beginning where we said the hard skills form about probably 20%, and then the soft skills, they form about 80%. And uh, this is, I think, has become uh, very core, especially when it comes to uh, factors for uh, employability, where 
we might all have the same skills, but now what we are looking at, what are your soft skills? How well do you, are you able to optimize on the soft skills, on the hard skills based on the, uh, on the soft skills? So hard skills versus soft skills, uh, there's more weight uh, on the soft skills, which are able to boost uh, the soft skills. Finally, we are saying effective, uh, effective interpersonal skills grounded on strong on strong technical skills uh, or functional skills and vision are key to effective communication. So these are just five principles uh, which are very important uh, to us as leaders just to reflect on and uh, just appreciate uh, these uh, principles among the other areas that I've mentioned. I just want to pause there for two minutes uh, before I move on to three qualities of an effective communicator, and uh, this will be, uh, I'll be finalizing with this. But before that, let me pause there for maybe a, about three minutes just to get your reflection. Um, can all have one minute, uh, each of us, just to share what has come out clear so far? Uh, what can be, or what is your takeaway? Uh, up to where we have reached, and maybe any additional that you may want to share, and then we'll be able to pick up from there. So let me start with the chairman, and then we'll move to Maurice, and then Nelson. Karibu chairman. Uh, thank you, Bonake. Thank you very much, uh, Nelson. Uh, uh, mine still goes to the first slide. Uh, the first slide says something like, I don't know whether I paraphrase, is that communication is 20% what we know and 80% uh, how, is it 80% how you feel that you know? I don't know how, maybe you can go there so that, but I, uh, I'll tell you what I, I perceived. Knowing or feeling that you know, uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, you are muted. You are muted. Okay. okay, sorry, Chairman, we lost you. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, but now the slide is there. The slide is up. Yes, uh, effective question is 20% what you know and 80% you feel about you eh, feel about what you know. Uh, what are getting from this mm -hmm. to say that somebody be having uh, may even have pre may prepare a sermon or may prepare a lesson. But if that person, uh, that message has not been internalized, that message is not in you, that message is not in sync with you, you not be able to communicate it effectively. Uh, two things I can say, like the way we have said about our reverend, uh, when that message burns in him, that I need to populate uh, the, the heaven with the, what we call believers, she cannot keep quiet. She will use all. So what I'm trying to say is that she will become the message. So when you look at her, she becomes that message. So you can see that she feel what she feels. It's so clear that she feels that, and that's what that takes me to to one of the most again effective sermons in the Book of Acts when Peter came out, uh, you know, they were filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts 2. And actually now people, they are the ones who are responding and saying, what shall we do? So what point Mewashika, you have, it's like you are, you are the man yourself now. So, so it goes back to what we said last week. Uh, you, I can only be as if I have become that change myself. 
so that's what that that, that uh, uh, that's what I've learned or that's what I've reflected that uh, I can only be as effective if that message resonates with me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Morris. Thank you, Chairman. And I know that we have two chairmen here, yet, but now you're the chair. Mm -hmm. Well, um, from our last last uh, class that we are attending, you you mentioned that uh, you three for six hours, then take two, then take four mm -hmm. hours for preparation to mm -hmm. understand then to be understood. Eh? Mm. It means that in communication, it requires a lot of preparation of self before mm. you actually release it to the next person. Because uh, you have also mentioned very well here that you need to spend more time to understand first respond. Because sometimes you could be responding on a different perspective that if you release it according to communication effectively, uh, words could come out, yes. The tone could be out differently because you could you did not understand anybody else. So first of all, your understanding is more important for whatever you want to communicate, other than even responding or even doing the communication itself. So uh, mine is underpinned on understanding eh, of what you want to communicate and reflect on the results. Then you see how best. You can even present your body and facial, which is 55% of, of your communication. Uh, that's what I would put it. Much of it is for me is understanding my point of communication and what I want to communicate. And then it can give a preparation even on my talk. It can give me how to do, my, how to develop my body language of and give then I definitely get a good because as you said, communication, leadership equation. If you don't communicate, we will not be able to feel you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Maurice. I'll definitely get a result because as you said, communication is all uh, leadership. Is all. Yeah, thank you so much, Morris. Uh, Nelson, please. Uh, thank you so much, Chairman. So mine, I will start by saying that uh, as, as, as leaders, we are always communicating. And as leaders, the challenge is, is to adapt to every situation that comes to our table mm. or our area of operation because But then as you continue communicating, the circumstances might change, and then you need to adapt able to pass through the message effectively so as to be able to meet uh, the purpose, to get the result out of the audience that you had intended to. Uh, you might have good intentions, but if you don't know how to communicate the message that you need, then uh, clearly, you will do a lot of talking, but your audience won't really get, uh, you won't really connect with your audience on uh, the message that you had intended to, to pass to them. That your is really key in uh, communication. And, uh, and uh, you might be a genius, uh, but way you, communicate will determine if the people you are leading will really buy into your ideas or also uh, develop uh, a part of your geniusness that you have. I can give an example of, you see, like, uh, let's say Trump. Trump was the leader of the United States of America. He might have been, he might have given good speeches but if you look at the way delivering them, tone is 
uh, body language, his speech, delivery style, really rubbed uh, most of the people away. So he might have had good intentions to lead it. it it wasn't appealing to everyone, which eventually caused rifts and divisions and uh, eventually was kicked out of the uh, presidency. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nelson and Morris and Chairman. And I think just picking it up from uh, what Nelson has mentioned, I think adapting is very important. Uh, I am, um, there are times I think I've found myself in different setups. Sometimes you're dealing with the young people and maybe whatever you had prepared, you realize it may not, uh, it, it may not come out well in the form that you had prepared. Maybe you had some slides, but you feel now, I don't need slides here. I need to change my approach for me to be able to uh, convey this message. So I just need to adapt to the, to the audience. And this is what I'll be talking about. Uh, it's all about the audience. It's all about the audience. Uh, at the end of it all, uh, whatever we do, whatever we say, uh, the final, uh, the, the final results will just be measured or weighed by did the audience really understand what I was saying. So I think adaptability is important. And uh, Nelson, you have said we are always communicating consciously or unconsciously. So this is a role that. It's embodied uh, in the life of a leader. And uh, I think this is why we are saying for a leader, there's no private versus public life because everywhere we are, we are communicating. Uh, you said good intentions. Uh, we always say good intentions are not good enough. Uh, we need to be more knowledgeable and to affirm our good intentions. And also we need to be smarter in terms of how do we deliver whatever we are meant to deliver. Choice of how we sound, choice of how we deliver the message is also important. And I think for the, the example you've given about Trump, I think it's all about the audience, it's all about the bigger community out there. So we might need to uh, refocus so much from ourselves just and then just to be able to focus on will the audience appreciate and understand what I'm saying. So I think those are very important messages. This, the, uh, comments uh, which have really uh, enhanced what we are sharing today. And we are saying we, we embody the message. We embody the message. Once you embody the message, then you're able to convey it uh, more clear. So I want to move on to, I want to move on to the last part of this session. Uh, and then we'll be able to conclude with this. So the three qualities of an effective communicator. Uh, so we, I'll put it in, uh, be an APE, an effective communicator is an APE. An APE means uh, audience-centered, uh, passionate expert. So I need to be an APE as an effective communicator. Uh, and I think this will be a good, uh, a good takeaway or a good, uh, point to not just like the core of this session. So be an AP, be an audience-centered, uh, be passionate and be the expert. So audience-centered, we are saying, uh, forget about yourself, approach everything in your presentation from an audience-centered perspective. And uh, think beyond yourself, how you look, how you sound, or even how you, you dress or how, uh, these are important factors, but when it comes to communication, then we may need to go a little bit far, a little bit more than these uh, factors that we have mentioned here. We are not saying that we ignore them, but we are saying that now we need to think more about uh, who the audience, because at the end of it all, we are communicating uh, for the purposes of connecting with the audience. And just remember the example that Nelson has given. I think focusing on being audience-centered then I'll be trying to ask myself so many questions as I engage uh, with them. So we are saying it's about engaging your audience. It's about connecting with your audience. Everything you do uh, in your speech or in your presentation has to be focused on the, on the audience. 
Okay, so audience centered, uh, audience focused, that is our APE. So when we are designing our presentation, then we need to ask ourselves uh, some of these questions. Uh, for example, what information does my audience need to know? How can I make this information more relevant for them? And how can I help them achieve their goals? So you see, it's all about uh, understanding the audience that I prepare my message uh, to be able to uh, be in sync with what uh, they need to, uh, the message I need them to understand from my communication. At the end of, at the beginning or at the end of it all, there's something you want to communicate, but it has to be, uh, it has to adapt to how the audience are able to interpret and understand you. So AP, uh, the first, so A is audience centered, P is passion. So enthusiasm reflects the passion uh, within us as, as um, leaders. And we are saying, if you want to sell, you first have to be sold. You first have to buy into your message and your ideas before you can sell them to your audience. I think this is powerful. This is very important. I need to embody the message. I need to inscribe the message in me. I need to be the message. Then once I've bought into my message, I've bought into that vision, I've bought into that idea, I have embodied it into me, then I can relentlessly talk about it. I can relentlessly communicate uh, the message. And this has happened to what we are doing uh, when it comes to leadership uh, trainings. Uh, I think every opportunity we get or every opportunity I get, I'm always very keen to be able to communicate these issues of equipping leaders. It's part and parcel of uh, our life. And uh, it's something that we do it in season or out of season. We do it at every opportune time. Uh, it's, it's something that naturally just flows uh, from us. So I think we bought into this we bought into this and therefore it's much easier to be able to sell it out to others. So your audience will consciously pick up your signal. And I think this is just with what Nelson said, we are always communicating. So uh, they will always pick up something uh, from us in terms of our communication. So if you're not passionate about your topic, then how do we expect uh, maybe my audience to be able to appreciate the topic? Because if you speak on a topic that I'm not, uh, conversant or I'm not the master, uh, I've not mastered, then my expression will be telling something different. My body language will be telling something different. And uh, I've noticed that every time I've, I'm well prepared uh, for a presentation, then there's, you don't struggle. You, 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 you're able to flow through, you're able to enjoy through whatever you're saying. Uh, and there is sync. There is a sync in terms of the language, in terms of the paralanguage, and also in terms of the, uh, the body language. Uh, all of them are in sync uh, because the heart has the message and you have embodied the message. So lastly, we are saying the A is audience centered, P, be passionate. And then uh, the last one we are saying, be the expert. So APE, uh, the last is expert, be the expert. I need to master my subject. I need to be the, uh, the expert in that topic. I need to be knowledgeable about the topic for me to be able to offer maximum value to the audience. Because we treasure the audience, we treasure their minutes, we treasure their time. And audience will always give us uh, first few minutes to trust us or to disconnect from us, to connect with us, follow us through or just to switch off and do something else. And this will be based on how do we bring out the message? Are we knowledgeable? Are we passionate? Uh, have we mastered what we are saying? Are we adding value uh, to them? So if they're they able to get this from us, then they will spend their time listening to what we are communicating. So I need to be the master. So if you're an expert on the topic you're presenting, then there is that feeling of, confidence and uh, also feeling uh, easy in terms of my communication. The level of confidence will obviously reflect uh, both in the body language and on the delivery. So uh, I think AP is important. 
uh, AP is important. Uh, so I need to be audience centered. Uh, I need to be passionate and I need to be the expert. Those three are very important uh, to any effective communicator. So lastly, there are speaking competences from the manual, uh, speaking competences. So I'll just highlight them, but the manual has more details. One, we are saying engaging to introduction. Uh, I said the audience will always give us one or two minutes to decide if they're going to flow with us or they're going to let us alone and they engage on something else. So how do I connect them, connect with them from the very beginning? That needs a very engaging introduction. You will realize some of the uh, effective communicators, some of the best sellers out there, uh, in most cases, they will just start with a very simple story, but uh, they will want to connect with the people. There's one, uh, one of them I was listening to, and uh, he started from a very, a very funny note uh, because he was called, invited to a meeting and the audience were, were the, 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 the previous speaker didn't really connect with the audience. So he took, up, he, took the, he took to the stage when people were, had already disconnected. So how do we connect this people back? So you have to be very creative uh, to be able to bring the people back. And uh, he adapted, he adapted uh, his style to the, 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 the audience. And I think that openness just to think through, think quick, uh, think creatively, especially as the introduction is uh, very, very important. So either it can be a story or any other format that will be able to help us connect with the audience. Then master, uh, mastery of the topic. I, uh, I think I've mentioned this so that I'm able to connect with the audience. So that is a speaking competence, be a master. Then adapted to the audience. Uh, we have mentioned about that. Uh, clear organization. How do we flow? Uh, ensuring that we're able to connect through. That if the audience draw a line, they can be able to clearly draw a line uh, on the message from the very beginning uh, to the very end. Then well-supported ideas, it's good to boost the ideas. And this is why when it comes to issues of uh, references, issues of uh, statistics becomes very important. There is something that happens with the figure. Uh, there's something that happens with statistics, especially when it comes to introduction. Uh, the moment you, you talk about 80% uh, of a leader's role is all about communicating already, people become curious. The audience are more curious. They want to hear more uh, on this particular area. So it can be statistics. It can be some probably alarming statement in a way or catching statement, uh, which will want, will, will, will help them to connect with you all the way. So support the ideas and then clear and vivid language. Uh, and I think that's what also, uh, that's also what Nelson mentioned when he was talking about the language uh, from uh, uh, by Trump. So very important when it comes to language. Then suitable vocal expression, and then corresponding and vocal. Uh, there has to be the they have to be in sync, and then adopt use of visual visual aids. I think that's clear. Uh, then convincing. Uh, persuasion language, uh, closure in conclusion. Always, we always try to make sure that we, we, we bring it to a close. I know there are speakers who will use this as a bait, uh, but if you really, you're very authentic and you're very clear in what you're communicating, then you'll always ensure there is a good closure and uh, you leave people with no room to guess of what your message was leading to. Yeah, so uh, and that, that's, that's critical. And then preparation and practice, preparation and practice. Um, Morris, you reminded us about the quote by uh, Abraham Lincoln, that if you had six hours to cut a tree, then you'll spend four hours to prepare and two hours to cut down the tree. So preparation will always take more time. So these are 12 speaking competencies. 
uh, which are very important to us. And I think we just need to reflect more on this. Uh, finally, there are communication stoppers. We need, we need to watch out for this. There's a way we block people from communicating. There's a way we can choke communication. There's a way we can put some stoppers, uh, sometimes even without knowing. And these are some of the phrases that uh, uh, we can, that, that sometimes people use and they stop the communication. For example, you can say, this is the way it is. There is no room here. It's like it's decided, uh, this is final. Or just saying you are wrong, then we have stopped that communication. Or what is your proof? This might look more of a polite, polite communication, but again, uh, we need to refresh it uh, to be able to help the, uh, to open the discussion. Uh, whatever, or you, or we versus they, or us versus them. So th these are some of the stoppers that are important to watch out so that we elicit and encourage uh, communication and uh, also allow others to share their perspective. So finally, we are saying that effective leaders know that effective communication is very critical. It's a, it's a success factor in every leadership situation. And then communication should be uh, purposeful, uh, intentional, active, rather than pass a passive activity. So it's really not a passive activity, it's an active uh, activity, both in terms of listening and in terms of communicating. Again, effective communicators engage in every conversation having an expected outcome in mind. And with every different conversion opportunity, effective communicators, they clearly understand their audience and their roles and the type of details to communicate or the method, the best method of communication. So they take the available opportunity to share their perspective with an open mind. And lack of effective communication leaves too much room for imagination and speculation. And finally, we are saying, according to George Washington, when you can do the common things of life in an common way, you will command the attention of the world. It's all about how we communicate and how we're able to pass the ideas out there that will always determine how successful we become as leaders. So I just want to uh, pause there and I uh, appreciate you for coming this far. Actually, this is the last session and uh, we're happy that we've gone through this. And uh, maybe before we discuss the way forward, uh, I'll just allow us to share maybe any point, especially those who uh, those who joined us as we were going on, or even if you had shared and something else has cropped up and you feel that you need to echo it out for us to uh, take note, uh, please you can do that and then we'll, we'll close with that. Okay, so anybody with any comment, please feel free to do so. You can just unmute and uh, just share. My comment, uh, uh, like this, this, I think we have done. It a little bit very fast to get it, and I know it's a very very important topic, especially this communication. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know when I don't know when you'll be able to share uh, share with us the slides because most of them, like the the stoppers, the stoppers that you shared just uh, in, in passing, mm -hmm. are very important things. You know, Ajo, is those is those stoppers. I can tell you these communication things are place you are, you need to communicate. So I was thinking of, and I was just requesting to you, placing a request to your desk on how you can be able to get this as it is in your presentation, because some of these things are not here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you, Maurice. Now that we have concluded, uh, we remain with just two tasks. And then after that, we'll be able to share all these materials with you. Uh, so once we are done with the project, there will be one more task. 
And then once we are done with that task, we'll share the report from that task together with the, uh, all the slides from the very beginning uh, to the to the to this last slide. So we'll be sharing this in the next the latest in the next two weeks as a package. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good. Is there any? Maybe you can take one more. You can take one more, and then we discuss maybe in about five minutes about the project. Okay. Uh, I think on the the APE audience focus, passion, and be an expert. Uh, uh, that is uh, the qualities on effective communication. Uh, I think the point on uh, audience focus, uh, th th okay, I know all of them are important, but that is also quite, uh, so before you, you give a certain sound to, you know, like the leadership uh, positions that we have. Uh, the first thing I think that is, uh, this point is actually reminding us is that you need to go to the opposite side. You know, you are not seated on this side of the table. Go to the listener side or go to the people that you are speaking to. Uh, what are they struggling? What is their problem? So just like we normally say, I think in business, that uh, people will pay you in a certain business because you are solving a solution, uh, you are giving a solution to their problem. So mm -hmm. by you now speaking, as you speak to them, you have already understood what is teaching them, what is their problem. And now you are offering a solution or you are, you are giving hope. So I think that is a very important point uh, that we started by learning our audience mm -hmm. and uh, offering practical solutions so yeah i'm saying uh, uh, even in the this is normally the one of the points that uh, before you deliver in a sermon really need to to know the audience to you know your own and then of course passion and then be expert do enough research on what you want to tell them. Do not give them. Uh, it's like us now when we are in DCU Moja and you are giving us a sermon and we are used to like the level of JB. So you now move from that level and now try to, yeah, you, you, we have our, our, our base. So you can only move from that level. So be an expert. So you have to move above that thank mm. you thank you so much uh chairman yeah i think uh you know there's a story i read about nelson mandela and it was saying he was always the last person to mm. to speak so he was he was in a setup he was always the last person to uh -huh. speak. yeah so he will go around go around and then Finally, he will share his thought, uh, his thoughts at the end of it all. So uh, I think these successful, successful leaders out there, that's one of the qualities they uh, really uh, developed and uh, it, it helped them to be able to flow together with the people and also to be able to achieve uh, the, 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 their vision in life and the impact, because I, th I think at the end of it all, it's about the impact. So uh, I'll want to close there on this topic. Uh, we'll yeah. continue engaging the more. Uh, yes, Nelson? Yeah, just a quick one. Yeah. Uh, on the same, edge, we can look uh, or take an example of, uh, the way Jesus used to do his things. Mm. Uh, if you check his, his teachings, most of the time he used to use parables and other stories, whereby even if you win, the, the, the whole will still, or the story will still stick with you. 
and he engaged fishermen and turned he engaged priests, engaged uh, prisoners, so effective in his way of communicating that after an encounter whatever he deposited in you uh, really inspired, motivated and changed your mindset about life. And mm. I think that's how he was even able, the disciples were mm. able to stick around him mm. for all this time, even after he had left, they mm. still continued with the same message. Mm. Yeah. So we can yeah. take an example from how to engage. Mm. True, 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 Nelson. And I think Nelson, you have reminded about us about uh, context. Uh, pick the communication from the context uh, of the audience. So, what can they understand more easily? Uh, if they are fishing, if you can start from there and uh, adapt your message, and eventually take them to uh, to the to the message based on the context. Uh, what do they understand well? If they are fetching water, can we start from that and then build it all the way to what you want them to understand? So I think adapting to the context. Uh, you know, there's a book I was reading and uh, it, it highlighted, it was a survey that was done in the US. And there were some of the comments that came out from that survey. Uh, it was targeting non-believers and some of them felt th th there is a detachment between what the church is propagating and uh, what, what is really ailing them at the real life situations. So they felt like church sounds to be more abstract and then this is what we really, this, this is the issue that we are facing, but we feel that we are too far from these guys. There's a detachment. And I think Jesus was an expert in that. He really started from what is ailing you or what is ailing us and then he's able to build uh, around that to be able to achieve the objective at the end of it all so i think uh, we will engage more on this especially we are planning for a retreat uh, tentatively 14th of august and one of the core activity during the retreat is about communication so most of the activities that we'll be having on that day, uh, the overall uh, objective, as much as we'll be connecting, collaborating, uh, enhancing our networks, uh, we'll also be focusing so much on issues of activity. So we select the activities very uh, carefully and very keenly to be able to be in sync with the message that we want to convey on that particular day. So we'll still discuss more on this, uh, so just uh, for now, you can reserve that date. We're still working on the logistics and we'll be able to share more information uh, as we continue. Otherwise, I want us to maybe in the next, uh, let's say maximum eight minutes to discuss briefly about our project. Uh, how are we progressing? I, I shared uh, an outline of what uh, we intend to cover. Between now and Saturday, uh, there will be a lot of engagement between us and uh, you. Uh, we may want to receive your work as many times as possible uh, so that we can also give you more feedback because we are planning to have the Sunday school teachers on, on Saturday. Uh, they will be here to observe and also pick a few lessons from what we are doing. So I think we need to really stretch a lot between now and Saturday uh, so that we have the entire presentation uh, well packaged and uh, something that can also, they can also to pick a few things from our presentation. So let's just uh, get the updates. Even if you don't do a comprehensive presentation, if you can be able to do that, well and good. But if you are not able to do a comprehensive presentation tonight, we can share our progress. And I'll start with Nelson. You can share your progress uh, on behalf of your team, and then we'll move on to the, the other group.
So Nelson, you can take it up. Hello, Nelson, you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay, proceed. You able to see my screen? Yes. Yes, we can see it. Okay. So we are still sticking to our title, the one we had even in the last class, and it's creating awareness for locally manufactured products. Our team members are Maurice, Omondi, Steve Murebi, Nelson, Adolua, and uh, Job. That was the first slide. Then on the second slide, we have the introduction, uh, which goes through an experience of COVID-19 pandemic in early 2020. Our economy almost collapsed due to us being netters of almost everything we consume in our day-to-day -day operations. Approximately 50% of our employed workforce lost their jobs or sources of livelihood and those actively looking for employment could not to now. We have established that this could not have been the situation if we were manufacturing and consuming our local products at a higher scale than now and wouldn't have been adversely affected by the global value chain disruptions caused by the pandemic. To mitigate this, we are therefore encouraging and focused in creating awareness on consumption of locally manufactured goods to cushion us from such occurrences now and in the future. Instead, we are going to be the people exporting more, creating more employment and building generational wealth. That's our introduction. The imported goods than for locally manufactured or assembled goods. This creates an imbalance in the value chain, currency, and lack of development and innovativeness in the economy. We need to change this mindset through educating, creating awareness, and equipping the local populace to embrace locally manufactured products. Then uh, we have our motivation. Currently, the unemployment rate in the country is too high due to us being mass of imported goods. Through the consumption of locally manufactured goods, we will be able to create a robust value chain, employment opportunities, and creation of wealth. This will yield demand for labor, raw materials, infrastructure development, increased change, and foreign direct investment, instant self-reliant. Then we have our methodology uh, stroke survey, which reads, the number of graduates in Kenya exceeds the number of available job opportunities. According to the survey done by Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, each year 50,000 students graduate from universities across the country. And out of these only 10,000 are lucky to find any meaningful employment. Kenya's unemployment rate and with the employment to population ratio sliding to 57.7% from 64.4%. The highest proportion of the unemployed has remained between the ages of 20 and 24 and 25 and 35 with respective unemployment 22.8 and 21.7%. Out of every 10 unemployed Kenyans, According to the World Bank reports, spending on job programs in Kenya amounts to 0.3% of government. This has stagnated at 0.1% of the GDP in recent years, limiting the growth of job creation opportunities. According to the World Bank report on Kenya's imports and exports, 
the total value of exports is uh, US dollars 6,050 million, while the total value of imports is US dollars 17,377 million. Kenya exports of goods and services as a percentage of GDP is 13.18%. As a percentage of GDP is 23.01%. This ideally makes importer of goods and services and creates a negative trade balance and hence weakens the shilling. Then we have our and results. The country is in the middle of a perfect storm, and the declining and weakening shilling is the most visible manifestation of Kenya's economic woes. The main reason is that Kenya's economy is increasingly imbalanced. The country is importing too much and exporting too little. These two shocks. The gap between imports needs to be financed by financial inflows other than export earnings. Imports have soared mainly due to higher oil and food costs while exports remain stagnant. Between imports and exports also account deficit, now above 10% of GDP, one of the highest in the world today. Kenya's main exports don't even earn enough to pay for its oil imports, not to mention other imports beyond oil. Manufacturing stagnated a long time ago in Kenya, though it has been the driving force of other successful emerging economies. 10 years ago, manufacturing accounted for 11% of Kenya's economy, and it's the same today, despite a declining in the share of agriculture from 30% to 25%. If you import a lot, you need enough dollars to pay for these imports. Clearly, exports will give you everything you need. When exports aren't enough, which is the situation in Kenya today, the gap needs to be filled through other financial inflows locally, including remittances, e.g. KRA, private investment, and from development partners. If investors, local and international, think their money will lose its value in Kenya very quickly, which happens when inflation is high, they intend to move it to other countries where it holds value over the medium term. Creating awareness through media, i.e., aggressive advertising, media presence, mass text messaging, and partnering with billing media outlets to push their on pro bono the platform to advertise. Branding and ambassador. We have number three, to facilitate access of locally manufactured goods to the domestic market by engaging the local leaders and other like minded stakeholders to push manufacturing, consumption products, improving opportunities for procurement contracts, enabling plans easily and limiting the imports for locally available products. Number four, we have doing global business to business matchmaking with local businesses on e-commerce platforms like Alibaba to enable our local products access the global market. Then we have our recommendations and conclusions. 
creating awareness through person-to-person -person communication to enable people understand the value of consuming locally manufactured products. We also have integrating awareness of locally manufactured products through churches, schools, universities, and universities across the country. We have lobbying the government to change policies and give sub subsidies to local manufacturers. We have lobby the government to promote a conducive environment for local investment and investors to produce products that are globally competitive in price, quality, and quantity. We have to lobby the government to embrace import substitution for locally available goods and services in order to grow the economy and build a robust value chain. So in conclusion, we recommend that fairness of locally manufactured goods should be a continuous process and programs spearheaded and championed by our local and national leaders of our nation. Every person and child should be made aware that by consuming locally manufactured goods, they are creating wealth and employment for themselves and future generations. And this will grow and stabilize our economy. So that's where we had uh, paused as we plan to continue on the remaining part, but can also do other corrections and changes uh, that uh, we can get from the team, from the view we have about it and what we can correct and uh, complete it. Uh, thank you. Wow, uh, Nelson and the team, congratulations, well done. I think this is quite good progress. Uh, before I share my comments, let me open to the, the rest of the team. Maybe we can take one or, one or two comments and then I'll share my comments. So please, uh, if you have a comment, Proceed and just unmute and share. Well, uh, I just, just want to say that uh, we had to really set a meeting between the two of us, trying to get other people also on board. Uh, and uh, I've realized that person to person will give you a better view of uh, just back to this topic we have, to, we have done now communication. Uh, doing it when I'm online. So uh, uh, again, this is a topic that I am so much passionate about, even given that also Nelson is also about, uh, and he can be able to relate very well with, uh, with the reasons why when we do, we do awareness on locally manufactured goods, then it is going to reverse so many things as it is now. So my, my point is on two folds, that when you want to effectively have this done, then we have to create a meeting. Yesterday, we actually had a meeting for almost two hours, more than two hours, and it has given us a very good, what you are saying is, is good, and we still think that we need to do more uh, and research more, because I was also trying to, I was a meeting, there's a meeting I was, I was attending for East Africa, uh, leather this week, and it was organized by GIZ. That's German. Why is that in, in, in and consumption of the local product is around at around 76%. And you can see the figures we're giving you, whatever you're consuming is more of what they're coming from them. So the imbalance cannot allow us to grow as a nation. everything now is to create awareness of locally manufactured good because when people know like Nelson have mentioned that when they bring their money in Kenya is going to add value is going to have more, have more wealth on it then the foreign direct investment will come and will have a lot of inflows of foreign exchange which will eventually strengthen our, our shilling and that that will definitely increase wealth creation in this nation so i think this is something that is real actually we initially had a different topic but we change it that let's be real something that we can even pick beyond beyond this this treating we have something i can we can run with in, in, in our lives just we do it on it it will actually impact economy and the people immediately thank you back to you 
Well, thank you, Morris. Uh, Chairman, you have any comment or? Uh, mine is just soft. Yeah. I, I haven't uh, really gone into to, to, to so much details. Uh, maybe they can bell check, I'm asking. Uh, there was like the a buzz data integration. I'm sure it will bell check that will count that uh, yeah, it, it, you you'll collect that. Then I think there was one sentence on funerable shock. I, I'm not sure whether I got that sentence uh, that to be like, by going with this thread, they, we are in a funerable shock. I don't know whether there is a missing word that needed to come after that, because I, to me, that was not clear. Maybe you can go to that slide, uh, Nelson. Go back, back again. Yeah, that one, I think bulletin two. Maybe are uh, the economic shocks or something? Maybe, maybe it's good to add. This one that says this makes it vulnerable to shocks. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, Nelson will take note of that. Yep. Yeah, uh, so these are my comments. Um, I think for methodology, if I can start from there, uh, if you can consider benchmarking, benchmarking will really come out very well. Uh, maybe a country like South Korea, uh, they have done quite well on this area. So if you can benchmark, it will really add a lot of weight to your proposal. And also it will be an opportunity just to learn more from what they did. So uh, you can take one case, you can take one, one or two cases, uh, South Korea can be one of them. And maybe look out there from the net, which other country has been able to, uh, uh, has been able to perform well uh, based on their local production so for me i think since i've i've had a lot on uh, a lot of studies on south korea that can be one now the other comments uh, i think linking this to covid19 is also a plus uh, we, we this is our context and we appreciate what has happened and there are many lessons that we can pick from what is going on uh, especially on the over reliance on the imports and the impact. So I think that 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 uh, that is a very very important point. So the only comment I want to make on that, uh, please add references, uh, add references, cite the uh, cite the uh, some of the concerns. I've seen quite a lot of concerns on this issue. Uh, from some others or some uh, reports, so you can cite that uh, in your uh, in your report. Again, uh, I think we are talking about buy Kenya, build Kenya in another language. So that can be a very simple way of branding your communication. This is already the slogan that is out there. So you can think about your own area. If you want to use the same, or you can come up with another one. I didn't see your objectives. Uh, those are very important at this stage. Uh, I know last time we uh, we mentioned you had three objectives and we had an issue with uh, objective two and objective three. So I don't know if you are able to revise that. Uh, that, that is important for this session. So we, I, we corrected that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, only that the the format you shared mm. I didn't I, I didn't find where to fix them the slides okay yes so I was wondering where does where does it come in because uh, we have them we uh, went through them we corrected the two that had uh, the uh, uh, drift away from the main topic of awareness so mm. we created uh, we wrote them we wrote them okay so uh, you can uh, as part of the introduction immediately after the introduction you can slot them there i'll, I'll check on that floor uh, we can slot them there yeah maybe immediately after this we can slot them there uh, and I, I'm thinking about basically your objectives, uh, because when it comes to research or proposal, uh, we, we try to minimize assumptions as much as possible. So one, we are saying we want to create awareness for locally manufactured products. So I think the first question that we need to ask ourselves, is there a gap in terms of awareness? That, that's the first question you need to deal with. And that one, we need to check maybe some reports. Uh, we need to check some surveys. We need to check uh, any write-up that will give us these gaps uh, so that we, we, we confirm, we confirm. And this is also what falls when it, we, we are talking about methodology because methodology will help us to build on all these areas. So like, for example, uh, from if we say we'll do benchmarking, we'll focus on literature review. So the literature review will, is part of what will help us to identify the gap. But if we realize there are no en enough write-up that uh, is helping us to establish if there is a gap, then that is the, when, that is when we now uh, adopt another approach, maybe undertaking a survey, and in this survey, we can have a question on uh, issues of uh, awareness gap. So we do a sampling, and then we now confirm the gap from our own survey. So those are the two approaches. So one, establish the, the gap from the literature that you already exist, because I, I have seen you have tackled a lot, uh, quite a lot on empl unemployment, and I think we need, we still need to see that when it comes to issues of uh, awareness, the low awareness. We want to boost this. So are there lit is there literature that tells us that there is a low awareness so that uh, we can confirm indeed there is a gap and we want to, uh, to fill this gap or to make a contribution towards this, this, uh, uh, towards this gap. So I'm thinking like your objectives can flow from establishing the level of awareness uh, identifying probably appropriate awareness creation uh, uh, approaches or methods or channels, and then also identify maybe some strategies so that they just flow. We are still on the same topic, the same. So the objective one will build on the objective two, so that if you decide you're going to do a questionnaire, then these questions or these objectives will be addressed within that one questionnaire. Is that clear, uh, Nelson and Morris? Yes, yes. Uh, that's that's clear. Clear. That's yes. taken uh, to correct and yeah. improve uh, and add what we haven't uh, included. Yeah. So that we really simplify. Uh, I'm thinking this proposal, even in a minute, I should be able to present it. Uh, and that is the simplicity of what uh, we are doing and uh, what we expect. And I think the other question is that who can consume or benefit from this proposal? Uh, that's something we need to have at the back of our mind. At the end of it all, where will this proposal land? Who will be the beneficiaries? And who can consume this uh, proposal? Uh, that will help us now to, to focus more and also to think about the end, uh, the end product. So references, we need to see a lot of references uh, from the very beginning, COVID-19 and all that. 
uh, that will add on the authenticity and also credibility to the report. Uh, if we need to look at all products, it's still okay. But if you need to narrow down to a few products, that's still okay. Uh, I've said verify the awareness level. And then on the problem statement, is there any data to verify what we are saying? Need to check on that, on the problem statement. Uh, so we will we, we'll need to, like, like, just go to your problem statement. Yeah, so people have a high affinity for imported goods than for locally manufactured or assembled goods. So that's, that's a, if I can put it this way, it's, uh, it can be termed to be an assumption. So how do we really confirm and verify this? Is there any data? Is there any statistics that can be able to show this? Yes, this creates an imbalance in the value chain, a weaker currency and lack of uh, development and innovativeness in the economy. We need to change this mindset through educating, creating awareness. Uh, now that educating, creating awareness, that is okay because that is what we are addressing. But now we'll start with uh, confirming the higher affinity for imported goods and also confirming the awareness level. Those two are very important. And then once we say the awareness level is low, the higher affinity for imported is high, then we need to create awareness. Then you, you're able now to uh, really, it, is, it flows, it flows and it shows indeed you're addressing, uh, you're addressing a gap. So check if there is any statistics we can put there. And then for motivation, you talked about unemployment. Uh, I think you have some data on unemployment on another slide. So that unemployment uh, data can come and, and fit here. But again, we, we, are we are focusing on awareness creation. So as we are talking about unemployment, let's conclude with the awareness. Let's show how it's adding value uh, in terms of uh, the topic, uh, which is uh, uh, creating awareness for locally manufactured goods. So, so what is the uh, what is the value uh, if we are looking uh, in terms of unemployment? So we need to conclude with something to do with awareness and how it is impacting on the awareness level. And uh, methodology, I think I've proposed here that you can do, you can consider benchmarking. And two, already you are focusing on literature review. So that is another method that you have adopted. Uh, three, if there is need to conduct survey, that will be based on the available, uh, available literature. So if you have enough literature to be able to answer all these questions, then you don't need to undertake a survey. But if you feel that the literature that is available doesn't provide enough uh, to boost or support your, your propositions or your uh, hypothesis or assumptions, then you can, uh, you can decide to do a survey. So, but basically if what is coming out clear now, you are focusing on literature review. So, but I think benchmarking will be very important for you. Uh, and benchmarking, you can look at, you can even use maybe a SWOT analysis just to analyze that country, uh, focusing on this area, and then analyze Kenya and see where the gaps are. And then you can, that will inform your recommendations so that your recommendations will be so much grounded on the, on the, on, on the outcome of the study, uh, not basically on what we probably we have thought as a team, but also what has been informed by the literature. Good, so I think that's good enough for you guys. Uh, if we work on this, I'm sure this will be a report or a project that uh, can move to another level uh, as we move on. So uh, take note of that. And then uh, today is Saturday. If you can share your, your updated report by Tuesday, uh, it will help us to give you more feedback uh, so that we prepare for Saturday. So thank you for, thank you, Tim Nelson, Tim Morris, Tim Job. Uh, well done and let's keep the pace. 
Asante ni sana. Mm. Okay, so let's uh, conclude with the team, uh, the second team. Let's move on to the next team. Uh, now our team is the second one. Myself with Robert and uh, Nahashon, and uh, there was there is a third gent, a uh, fourth, fourth gentleman. Uh, but the others, we told you, they are not. They, they were not available, or rather, they were not. Uh, yeah, they didn't get, get time to participate. And I can see we have, we ha uh, we were doing something with Robert, but his network has a problem, mm -hmm. and I think he is the one with the key information on what is to be presented. I don't know. Robert, are you here? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's even, yeah, it's even gone. Yeah, he, he sent a message wow. on, uh, on uh, WhatsApp. Yeah, because. Uh -huh. Yeah, he sent a message. I'm having connection problem. He sent that message. Yeah. And uh, he has been very resilient. Yeah, because I think he went through out the yeah, throughout the lesson, I think he has not even uh, he has not been able to be in for a long time. So to, to, this looks like uh, we may not ourselves be able. Yeah. Uh, but we have really, really loved to hear your comments. Yeah. As we do another meeting, I don't know, maybe on Tuesday. Yeah, true, true. We can organize. Yeah, we can organize. Uh... Maybe we can have a meeting in the course of the in the a course of one. next week. Yeah, a short one before Saturday. Yeah. Maybe on Tuesday or Wednesday we'll confirm mm. about that. Yeah, we can do. Yeah. Wednesday is better. Wednesday, Wednesday is better. Okay. Yeah, because Tuesday is too close. Too close when people have to check up and catch okay. up with the with whatever they did too. Okay. So Wednesday is fine. Okay. Uh, and again, Chairman, I think the comments we have shared today also apply to your team yes yes yeah so i've already noted yeah so you uh, as you discuss I've noted them as you discuss you can look uh, and uh, try and align with the discussions that we have had today uh, mm. i'm seeing some of these pro uh, projects or proposals might uh, result to something better uh, they may take mm. different uh, it's not something just for class. If we really give it a lot of attention, and we, as Mori said, we need to read a lot. Uh, we need to research a lot. I think if we take that direction, then we might come out with some uh, proposals that can be presented to other high level uh, meetings that we are having out there. And we never know. So let's just give it our best. Uh, and then we see how it goes. Good. Otherwise, I thank you so much. We, it has always been a pleasure just uh, sitting down. I think our Saturdays, I'm also feeling some loneliness that we are coming to an end, but I know we'll pick something else up as we continue. So we have officially uh, finalized the coursework. So next Saturday, we'll finalize the project proposal. And then immediately after that, I will share a link for online evaluation which will again give you one week uh, so that once we are done with that, then that will be like the climax of this program. I've been challenged a lot. Uh, I think Maurice challenged me, cohort eight, they really challenged me. So I'm already working on level two of this program, uh, but that one will be communicated later on as we continue. Yeah, otherwise uh, let's, we can pause there for today. Uh, unless there is any comment and, and you talked you talked about the trainer training for trainers after the graduation yes 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 that will be coming on 22nd yeah. of uh, this month okay yeah yeah so okay. we'll also share, we'll be able to... yeah we'll be sharing more details on that also okay Good. I know Robert is coming in, but we are going out. So, uh, Chairman, maybe you can update him on our discussions. I and, will. I will. And congratulations. You will warm the, you, you, you will warm the room. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I will not I will not end the meeting. I will we'll just exit. If you need to consult, we can uh, keep yeah. the meeting on. Yeah. We'll exit. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, uh, Maurice has been very resilient. He has been knocked out so many times, but uh, has come back <laughs> strong. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we can end with the word, the word of grace. We can say grace together. Good and may the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, God, and the Lord, and the fellowship of the Holy and Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now, be with us now, and forever, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much. Uh, have a blessed night. Uh, we'll end thank you. And let Chairman. Come. God bless you too. Thank you. Robert.